tried to schedule Julie Bueller from Colts Up Close, host and writer. Something big happens. Something big comes down the pike, and tonight is no different. But we're committing to Julie. Julie, nice to talk to you. You know, I'm going to schedule you every single night because every single night that we get something hooked up, something huge breaks. And Fred Rogan on uh, NBCLosAngeles.com uh, is reporting that maybe Frank McCord is angling to keep the team, if you can believe that, Julie. Right, of course he is, because we just need more fodder to hate Frank McCourt in L.A. I mean, that's, that's exactly what we need. We don't have enough stuff to talk about. Why not, Frank McCourt? Insert yourself in the conversation. Yeah, so the, we'll, uh, we'll take your thoughts on that coming up a little later, 877-710-3776. Julie uh, is the host, the host of uh, Colts Up Close, and Julie, I, I brought you on because this whole Peyton Manning in Indianapolis thing for me is is fascinating. Number one, he's an icon. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. He he has uh, taken the Colts, basically built that stadium up there in Indianapolis, and and made the Colts brand what it is today. Now forget about the record because the Colts are still the Colts. I I can't imagine they're not going to bounce back from this. But who are they going to bounce back with at quarterback? Are they going to pick up Peyton Manning's option and keep him, or is he gone? Yeah, that's that is the. $28 million dollar question, A. And you know what's funny about this is every time people find out I work for the Colts, that's the number one question is, how can one man make such an impact on this team? And it isn't just Peyton Manning being gone that has led to the Colts' dismal season. The entire defense is decimated. There's a lot of changing of the guard. But at the helm of it all is Peyton Manning. And Honestly, all the all the prognosticators, everyone who's coming out and sharing an opinion on this matter, should really preface everything they say with, "Hey guys, this is nothing but a really, maybe even not that well educated, but it's a guess. Nobody knows. Peyton Manning doesn't know what's going on with his neck. His doctors aren't sure when his neck is going to." fully recover and be serviceable and this is the type of injury that you can't take the help and just try to stick him out on the field all while Sam Bradford he's got to heal and so um, that's why the Colts haven't put him on IR because if they put him on IR they can't see whether or not he'll ever be Peyton Manning again and A, that's a very real reality that is a huge question mark, will Peyton Manning ever be back? So to answer your question the only reality that anyone can agree to and that anyone knows for sure is that that option, that $28 million option, and really the rest of the four-year contract will most certainly need to be reworked if he used to stay a Colt. That's Julie Bueller, host of uh, Colts Up Close. Uh, Julie, I guess it, it could happen to anybody being traded. Lamar Odom cried about it a little bit, but 40, 50 years ago, the Colts traded Johnny Unitas to the San Diego Chargers, so it can happen to even Peyton Manning, but I, I, I've struggled with wanting to be the GM to say, to have that on your headstone when you died, I traded Peyton Manning. Yeah, and, and to be frank, I don't think that would happen. I really don't think that would happen. First of all, you don't have to look any further than Brett Favre a couple of years ago, or even Donovan McNabb rele relegated to a practice squad and now sitting at home. Peyton Manning's a big legacy guy. How would he feel going to a new offense and then all of a sudden a year or two removed from from this new team that's so foreign to him, um, then all of a sudden being out of the league, and, and it's so inglorious. <laughs> and yet, here's Peyton Manning, arguably, A, we're talking about the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. That's not a tough argument to make, and that's not being a homer. That's just being a football savant. And um, So if you look at that, you think, gosh, how could, how could Peyton let that happen? I'll tell you this, Jim Ursay won't let that happen, and um, the idea of trading Peyton Manning is, um, I, would, I would honestly give it a 10% shot. Um, they'd, a, they'd have to rework the contract in a big way. And B, another team would have to see what he's capable of as well. And if he's capable of anything, the Colts are going to want to keep him. And they'll, they'll draft Andrew Luck too. You know, Archie Manning coming out and saying that, these two couldn't coexist. That was kind of left field. Um, I don't think that that bears any weight in the Colts' front office. So if you ask me my educated guess, I'd give Peyton Manning an uh, um, 80% shot to remain a Colt, 110% shot to renegotiate his contract, and um, – We'll see what happens down the road. It is fascinating, though. That's Julie Bueller, host of uh, Colts Up Close. Julie, what's the sense of the fans? Do, do they want to stick with Manning, or are they uh, enamored with Andrew Luck? 
You know what? That is a great question, A. And I saw a poll on Indy on uh, Indianapolis Business Journal, and you're not going to believe this, but 55 percent of the fan base say, you know what? Peyton thanks for everything, but we're ready for Andrew Luck now. So more than, now, the fans I talk to, they want the best of both worlds. They want Peyton to stay, and they want to draft Andrew Luck. But everybody seems to realize that Andrew Luck is is an opportunity to replace a legend, and how many opportunities do you get to replace a legend? I mean, you have Steve Young and Joe Montana, and then uh, Brett Favre and, and Aaron Rodgers, and that's about it, buddy. So I think the fan base, they're an educated fan base, they're a smart fan base, they know it's a business, and they really got very used to winning, so they kind of want to get back to it. Archie Manning, Peyton's dad, at first uh, said that Luck and Manning probably couldn't work well together, but then he took it back the next day. What, can you imagine a situation where they're both together? Or is that uh, too surreal? No, I, I, I can imagine that perfectly well. I mean, look what the Bengals did that for Carson Palmer. They had uh, they drafted him number one overall and then had him sit on the bench for a year, specifically so he could learn the NFL game. And, and I think that worked out well for him. Um, Aaron Rodgers, of course, was not picked number one overall. He was picked 25th, and so it's a little bit different. But, look, again, these are football players, and they want to do one thing, and that's win. And and I don't think Andrew Luck is a selfish guy. Peyton Manning's not a selfish guy. They're not going to look at themselves in the mirror and say, um, I have to be the guy or else I'm gone. Again, Peyton Manning is a legacy guy. He want, He loves that. I mean, it's it's incredible that in the past couple of years we've seen these titans of the game, like Brett Favre, just collapse in the public eye. Peyton Manning does not want that, and I know that for a fact. So um, if, don't think he's not watching very closely, and don't think that he wouldn't rather um, help tutor a young kid along for a year and see how that goes. So the two of them can coexist. That's not a problem at all. It's not either or. Julie, before the season, Trent Dilfer uh, went on with uh, Colin Cowherd and, and said this, and, and I had trouble believing it, but uh, now I, I have to give him a lot of credit. I can't see the Colts winning more than a game without Dave Manning. Uh, I think he's that valuable to that team. I, I, heard, uh, hey, I heard 500 toss around yesterday, and, and I'm thinking to myself, they'll be lucky to win one or two games without Dave Manning. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this thing unfolds if he misses a lot of time. Julie, after five losses, I kind of had fun and played around with, with giving Peyton Manning not a first-place MVP vote, but just the last possible vote. You know how you see the MVP voting and how it all yeah. scales up? Just give him one symbolic vote. And now some people are actually maybe taking that seriously. Well, no doubt. The NFL Magazine, which launches tomorrow, uh, actually is giving Peyton Manning the MVP vote. But you also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you have to understand the offensive line has had eight different rotations go through there this season. You have the entire interior of the defense on IR and Eric Foster, Melvin Bullitt, Gary Brackett. Not only do you lose this talent, but you also lose the leadership. And we know that the Colts defense, which is giving up double the points almost, that it, or a touchdown and a half more this year than it did last year, we know their defense is specially built for the system that it runs. So you lose the leadership, you lose the talent. Yeah, there's a huge vacuum. Um, and everyone looks at Peyton Manning being gone as the reason. Certainly is a lot of a reason. But uh, there's been plenty of injuries around that team, A, and it's kind of this weird collision of circumstances that has just befallen this team, um, almost that it's kind of surreal in that regard, and that there's so much that has gone wrong. You just kind of look around going, oh, can we get a little piece of time, just a little bit, just people have spread to the world this way, man, we're not that far away. Julie Bueller is the host of uh, Colts Up Close, also involved with a website, uh, brand new launch, I believe, the sportsgirls.com. What's that about, Julie? Yes, this is a really cool thing, A. Um, we want to educate women on sports. I mean, obviously, I've been in sports media for a long time, and, and it's really neat when you get to connect with all sorts of people, men and women. And a lot of times, women feel like there is this divide, there is this gap, because they don't know the rules, they don't know what first and first and ten is, or, or third and two, um, and so the sports girls wants to educate women on sports, specifically so that uh, they can feel a part of this whole crazy world of sports that we so thoroughly enjoy. So we're looking for another host or 
or hostess, I should say. We're doing a nationwide search. Anyone can go to thesportsgirl.com and log and register. Um, there is a $28 uh, registration fee, and $8 goes to the Marshall Falk Foundation. Mar we're helping Marshall uh, raise money for his foundation as well. And it's, you know, it's all about just bringing the message of uh, we're all in this together. And sports, as kooky and crazy from, you know, the oddity going on in Denver to the oddity going on in Indianapolis, it's all about just bringing people together and enjoying sports. And so that's the Sports Girls website. And I'm really excited about it because I love, I love history. I know you're a big history guy, too. And, and uh, being able to explain, like, where the foreign past came from to a bunch of women is, is a lot of fun. Julie, I've developed this uh, revolutionary concept. It's called the team-in-law concept for guys. In other words, it, like, like when you marry someone, you marry their brother, their sister, their mom, their cousins. Why don't you marry their team as well, especially if they're not rivals? In other words, like a, a Charger and a Raider fan, you can't have your, the Raiders as your team-in-law if the Chargers right. are your team. But if, it's, if you're marrying a Redskins fan and you're a Charger fan, why not adopt the Redskins as your team-in-law? Yeah. You get to watch double the football, and you make uh, your husband or wife really happy. I think that's brilliant. I mean, this is why I come on your show, is, is to learn and glean some of the brilliance from you. But absolutely. Um, I know that whenever, I'm, I'm not married myself, but my brother and his wife have done that exact thing. And his wife is a huge Colt fan. So she was pretty stoked when, when I started working for the Colt. But now, now he's even more of a Colt fan. And, and as you said, you just get to watch more football. You get to enjoy more of the games. And it's a win-win for everybody. It's a harmonious home as well. <laughs> Julie, who doesn't want that? No, I I'm going to schedule for tomorrow. Uh, schedule for tomorrow because I'm sure that it, once I do, Dwight Howard's coming to L.A. Buddy, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. What the, what kind of craziness is going on in the NBA? Is have the Kardashians and their many ability to manufacture drama just swept the NBA? Julie, it's funny that you mentioned the Kardashians. Some pictures have surfaced of Chris Humphreys. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta. Just find out these pictures that surfaced with Chris Humphreys and groupies. I'm not going to weep for humanity after seeing these, am I? Um, no, they're not X-rated or anything, but they certainly are damning. Oh, terrific. So, That's true. Let's, let's just say it happened within the 72-day Let's just say it happened within the 72-day window. <laughs> That's shocking that Humphreys would find himself in a compromising position. Unbelievable. That's, That's odd. Julie, odd. Thanks, thanks for the time, Julie. Anytime, That's uh, Julie Bueller from uh, Colts Up Close, also uh, thesportsgirls.com. Coming up next, some reaction. NBC Los Angeles.